Hello and welcome. My name's Andre Walker, and your weekly monologue starts right now. Barack Obama is once again doing what he does best, damaging America on the world stage with his latest intervention in British politics. Just days after he attacked the UK for bombing the murderous dictator Colonel Gaddafi, he's announced the plans to travel to Britain to campaign for the UK to stay in the European Union. The referendum is on June 23rd, so that means Uncle Barry is planning to come over whilst he's still the American president on the US taxpayers' expense to try and persuade America's closest ally to be taken over by people who don't like America. Not only that, but he had a go at the Mayor of London, Boris Johnson, when Boris dared to suggest it was not the place of the US President to come over and campaign in a foreign referendum. Remember, after the Queen was exposed as wanting to leave the EU, she said that she'd stay out of the referendum. So why is it that the US Head of State is campaigning when the British Head of State is not? Guys, I'm confused. Didn't you fight a war to avoid being involved in British affairs? Why is it that Obama is always on the side of the people who loathe America? It's almost as if Liberal Democrats hate the USA and want to be more like the Soviet Union. Well, we know Bernie Sanders wants that anyway. In fact, the only good thing about Bernie Sanders is that he's not sleeping with Bill Clinton. Or rather, we assume he isn't sleeping with Bill Clinton. This week, the former Top Gear presenter and abuser of BBC staff, Jeremy Clarkson, came out as a supporter of Britain staying in the EU. He wants a United States of Europe. That is, quote, liberal and kind, unquote, and even has its own army. Now, if Americans think they're in trouble, at least no one is proposing to entrust your national defence to Belgium. Let's just remind ourselves that Belgium is a country that's only famous for one thing, inventing French fries. But the, but the country is so pointless and forgettable that nobody noticed, hence the name, French fries. Americans just saw that their women had hairy armpits and their men had excessive body odour and they all said ooh la la quite often to assume they were French. But to be fair to the Belgians, when hamburgers were first introduced, they got their own back because they believed they should be eaten raw. To this day, steak tartare is called an Americana in Brussels. I suppose that does get you back for the French fries snob. But if you think that Washington's a bit of a joke, imagine being governed from the place that thinks overweight Americans got that way because of their love of raw beef mixed with raw eggs. If that was your national dish, I'm pretty certain there would be no obesity crisis at all because no one likes it. A completely raw beef is even more likely to make you sick than eating an E. coli ridden burrito from Chipotle. Is it even possible to be more dangerous than that? Yup guys, Chipotle is a pretty toxic environment right now, just not quite as toxic as the Breitbart newsroom. That was a monologue, just time to announce the results of last week's quiz. We asked, how many lefties does it take to stop a Trump rally? Simon from Hollywood correctly answered, we don't know because no one had the necessary botulism injections to safely approach the biohazard that is the lefty protesters. Ooh, ooh, whiff, whiff. Simon, your Tom Cruise closet maximizer is in the post right now. Until next week, guys, goodbye. Check out Andre's column at townhall.com. Check him out on Twitter at Andre JP Walker. And read Andre's work here, Behind Enemy Lines. Now back to the show.